So you've got your cruise booked and all of that figured out, but now comes time to decide how and when you get yourself to your cruise port destination. Now, if you're gonna drive, that's a whole other conversation. This video is geared toward cruisers like me who unfortunately must fly into their departing port city. In this video, I'm gonna cover the following, so feel free to skip ahead to whatever parts apply to you or whatever it is that you wanna see. First, I'm gonna talk about the timing of flying into your departure port. Can you fly in the same day or should you come in early? Next, we're gonna cover transportation methods to get to the port from either the airport or the hotel. Then I'm going to give you my hand-picked recommendations for hotels in three of Florida's most popular ports, Port Miami, Port Everglades out of Fort Lauderdale, and finally, Port Canaveral. And for each, I'll give you two sets of recommendations, beachfront recommendations, as well as affordable options that provide a shuttle to the cruise port. Then I'll close by sharing with you my suggestions about flying back from a cruise and what to do if you get stuck in that awkward situation where you have no choice but to take a super late flight home. All right, let's get into it. First, let's talk about flying into port. If you're a cruiser flying into your departure port, you have to decide when you plan to arrive as part of your cruise planning process, whether it's the same day, the night before, or even more than one night before. Now, here are some things to consider as you make this decision. Flying into your cruise departure port the same day your cruise embarks, that's a risky venture, but it is doable. In fact, I admit I personally do it often, although I am fully aware of the risks of doing so. Now, the obvious benefit of flying in same day is that you don't have to spend an extra day or more traveling to your cruise port. And that's an important consideration for cruisers with limited paid time off of work, childcare needs, or other factors. Sometimes, honestly, it's just unavoidable. In other cases though, maybe you just don't want to incur the additional expenses of another night's hotel stay. Now, the risk of flying in same day is that a canceled flight or even a lengthy delay could result in you missing your cruise. So here are the factors that you need to keep in mind before risking flying in on the same day of your cruise. Now, I only do it if one, I can find a direct flight from my home city to the cruise port. Layovers significantly increase your chance of missing your cruise or incurring flight delays. And remember, that cruise ship will not wait for you. The other criteria I use is that flights are available early in the morning. I personally will only fly on same day if I can get an early morning flight, preferably the first one that the particular airline offers. As this minimizes the risk of delays. If I can't find a flight that gets me there by noon, I will not risk it. Third, it's a domestic cruise. I would never take the risk of flying in same day for an international cruise or a really expensive one. And another important factor is travel insurance, which I strongly recommend for all travelers. But note that some travel insurance policies won't cover a missed cruise if the policyholder booked a same day flight. So make sure you check on that. Some cruise lines offer flight bookings along with your cruise booking, like Carnival's Fly to Fun. Now that includes some protections against flight delays and cancellations. So that could be a nice option for you, although you'll likely pay more for your flight compared to booking it on your own. Now, while I admittedly fly in on the same day myself, under those conditions, it can create additional stress and it is definitely not advisable for first time cruisers. To reduce your risk of missing a cruise and to minimize the stress, most cruisers choose to fly in at least one day early before their cruise. Now, this of course then requires that travelers find a hotel option close to the cruise port. Selecting the right pre-cruise hotel is such an important topic topic that I want to dedicate this video to it. So when you're looking for a free cruise hotel, here's my advice. Decide what you want. Do you want just a place to sleep before your cruise or are you considering this like an extension of your cruise vacation? If it's the latter, you may, for example, search for beachfront hotels at your destination port rather than just airport hotels or affordable options. Regardless of what you choose, don't get hung up on cruise shuttle service. Every single day I go on the cruise message boards and I see cruisers asking, what are hotels near such and such port with shuttles to to port. Now, the sad reality is that a lot of hotels near port will offer you shuttles, but they're not free. Rarely are they free. Many hotels near cruise ports do offer these services, but this almost always comes at a significantly more expensive and inconvenient cost than using other transportation options like an Uber. You can also compare some shop independent transfer service pricing through an aggregator that you can find online. Now to save money, I generally try to use points earned from my hotel credit cards because hotels near cruise ports do tend to generally be more expensive than those that are not. Or I use a discounted third party vendor like the one that I'll link below. So as far as when and how you fly into port, that's really up to you, your risk tolerance, your budget, and your willingness to maybe incur additional stress, doing it the way I do 
which is flying in the same day. To minimize your risk, make life easier and less stressful, fly in the night before. Now that you've decided when to fly in, let's talk about how to get to port. If you choose to stay at a hotel in your port city before your cruise, you'll need to get to the port the next day. Now, most cruise lines offer what are called transfer services, but in my experience, these are almost always more expensive and far less convenient than other options like rideshare services, such as Uber or Lyft. Now with transfer service, I always recommend pricing it out with third-party independent operators, not just through the cruise line, because sometimes that option can be significantly cheaper. And remember, please do not get hung up on shuttle service provided by hotels because a lot of them offer it, but it's very rarely free. And when you pay for it, it's often more expensive than just simply taking an Uber and an Uber is so much cheaper. So your main options for transportation are traditional taxi service, a ride share like Uber or Lyft, shuttle service through the hotel or third party vendor, or four, transfer service booked directly through the cruise line. Now for me, I'm all about convenience. So I almost always go the ride share route, which is Uber. Next up, let's talk about hotel options. First with Miami. So you're flying into Miami to spend a night before you cruise out of Port Miami and the hotel choices are overwhelming to say the least. So in this video, I'll give you my hand-picked recommendations based on personal experience, as well as talking to and surveying hundreds of other cruisers. And disclosure, I have never once been sponsored by a hotel, so these are my honest opinions. Now, before getting into it, make note that Port Miami and Port Everglades out of Fort Lauderdale, they're surprisingly close to each other, usually just about 45 minutes by Uber, even in that heinous Miami traffic. So even if you're sailing out of Port Miami, it's often worth taking the time to check flights and hotels in Fort Lauderdale and vice versa. If I'm sailing out of Port Miami, for example, but I can find a Fort Lauderdale flight and hotel that's hundreds of dollars cheaper, I'm always gonna go that route and then simply take an Uber to Port Miami the morning of my sailing. Okay, so let's talk hotels in Miami. Now, I'm actually gonna give you two sets of recommendations. Miami Beach hotels for those that wanna spend a little more money on, let's call these splurge hotels, but that give you a bit of luxury, but most importantly, provide that extra beach day before your cruise begins. Then I'll share with you some value options, all that provide shuttle service to port. First, the splurge options in Miami Beach. Now, Miami as a city in general is pretty expensive and cruisers sometimes face sticker shock, even when considering affordable hotel options in the area. Now, Miami Beach hotels are obviously gonna be more pricey and they also may tack on additional resort fees. So make sure you check on that. Although some of these like with Hyatt and Hilton might be waived if you are a credit card holder. So check on that as a way to save money. Now, another watch out point. I do not ever recommend staying in a Miami Beach hotel during the months of March and April. This is peak spring break season and those beaches are romping with rowdy students and probably it's not going to make for an enjoyable experience for most cruisers. My first recommendation is the Confidant on Miami Beach. It's located right on Collins Avenue. I stayed there a ton and I like that it's a Hyatt property, but although it's owned by a big name chain, it really feels like one of those chic boutique properties. It's located only about seven miles from the cruise port and it provides this retro glam beach vibe that I really love. If you're in the pool area every hour, they'll come around and they'll offer free popsicles and lemonade to guests. But the best part is you have direct access to Miami Beach. You just open a gate, walk across a small thoroughfare uh, that's for pedestrians only and you're right there at the beach. And another thing I love is that guests get free use of umbrellas, chairs, and towels. Now, the Confidant is undergoing some renovations, so make sure everything is open before you book. Another favorite is Circa 39 Miami Beach. Now, this is actually located kind of across the street from the Confidant, so it's not direct beach access, but all you have to do is cross Collins Avenue and you're right there at Miami Beach. It's a super short and easy walk, literally just crossing the street. And once you're at the beach, Circa 39 guests get access to complimentary umbrellas and chairs. The hotel will give you beach towels in the lobby, so make sure you grab those before heading out to the beach. Now, the pool here is significantly smaller than my other two recommendations, but the benefit is they're rarely crowded. But when you stay at Circa 39, it's mostly, in my experience, for the proximity to the beach. My third recommendation is Bentley Hotel South Beach. The website doesn't make this immediately clear, but the Bentley Hotel South Beach is actually a Hilton property. So if like me or a Hilton card holder, you don't have to pay those nasty resort fees. This hotel offers beachfront access and more amenities than some of the other Miami Beach hotels that are more boutique hotels. These include things like a rooftop pool, a jacuzzi, and a spa. Now, like the others, Bentley Hotel provides guests with complimentary access to loungers and umbrellas 
through what they branded their Bentley Beach Club. And towels are given out to guests there at the beach, which is super convenient. You don't have to grab them and carry them. They also have wait staff on hand for guests who want to order food and drinks. And the property is literally only about six miles from the cruise port. Now there are many great Miami Beach hotel options. And these are just my three personal handpicked recommendations because I've stayed at all of them. And in some cases I've stayed at them many, many times. They're a little pricey, but the extra beach day experience and the luxury they provide often makes it worth it if that's what you're seeking. So maybe you don't wanna drop so much coin on a beach experience. You don't care about that kind of thing. Or maybe you fly in late before your cruise on the night before and it's not worth it because you don't really have time to enjoy those amenities or go to the beach at all. Or maybe you're trying to save money or you're just looking for a safe and clean and affordable place to spend the night. If that describes you, listen up because here are my hand-picked affordable Miami recommendations. Know though that in Miami, again, this is an expensive city, so even frugal is relative here. And you're probably gonna pay a little bit more than you're used to, but here are my top picks. Hampton Inn Miami Airport East. The highly rated Hampton Inn Miami Airport East is conveniently located at the Miami airport and is only about eight and a half miles from port. They do offer a free shuttle from the airport to the hotel, and they also provide free Wi-Fi and breakfast. It's located just about six miles from port, so it's close. And while they do offer a shuttle to port, something you schedule when you check in, it costs money. It's $12 per person and it runs at set times, 10, 15, 11, 15, and 12, 15. In this case, an Uber at this distance is probably gonna be more affordable and a lot more convenient. You don't have to pre-book it and you're not limited to just those three times. So if you stay here, I recommend the Uber option to get to board. The second choice is confusing because it's also a Hampton Inn Miami property. In this case, however, it's the Blue Lagoon, the Hampton Inn Miami Airport South Blue Lagoon. Like its sister property, Hampton Blue Lagoon provides free airport to property shuttle service, free Wi-Fi, and free breakfast. Now they also offer a shuttle to Port Miami, but their rate's a little higher, $14 per person, and it runs at 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m., and noon. So again, an Uber is probably a better option. Now one distinction with this property is they do offer a park and sale rate that's built into the room rate. So if you are driving into port, this might be a good option for you. But if you're flying in, staying at the hotel, and need to get to the port the next day without a car, I would definitely take an Uber because 14 bucks a person means 28 bucks for two and Uber is almost always going to be cheaper because of this hotel's proximity to the port. My third recommendation is Comfort Suites Miami Airport North. As you probably realized, while some Miami hotels offer shuttle service to the port, almost all of them come at a cost. Now, this is a rare find because it includes a free shuttle to the cruise port. So if you stay at Comfort Suites Miami Airport North, you get this perk. Now you do have to register upon check-in and let them know that you're going to use the shuttle and it is limited on a first come first serve basis. So you wanna make sure you let your intentions be known at check-in. The property is only about 10 miles from port and like the other properties that are featured, you get complimentary Wi-Fi, free shuttle transfer from the airport to hotel and free breakfast. Given those amenities plus the free access to the shuttle to port, it's an excellent choice for cruisers seeking an affordable hotel option near Port Miami. Now remember, Miami and Fort Lauderdale for cruise purposes are kind of the same thing because they're so close. So next up, let's dive into Fort Lauderdale hotel options, which are often more affordable. And you might want to consider even if you're sailing out of Port Miami. For cruisers porting out of Port Everglades, they likely want to find a hotel for the night before stay at Fort Lauderdale. This cruise port in Fort Lauderdale is officially named Port Everglades, and it technically straddles not just Fort Lauderdale, but also Hollywood and Downey Beach. Now, it's only about 29 miles from Port Miami, and while it's small comparatively, Port Everglades accommodates nearly 3 million cruise passengers each year. But remember, if you're sailing out of Port Everglades, always check flight and hotel prices in and out of Miami as well, because Fort Lauderdale and Miami, they're not far. Now, like my recommendations for Miami, as with hotels in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, I do not recommend staying at a beach property in the months here in March and April because this is spring break season and the beaches are gonna be crowded, filled with rowdy college students, so just don't do it. Also, like the Miami area, the Fort Lauderdale area is generally a little more expensive than other port cities, so be cognizant of that. And this is especially the case if you opt for a beachside or a beachfront hotel. If you go for a beachfront hotel, also make sure you ask about resort fees because sometimes that can get tacked on as well. Here are my three recommendations for Fort Lauderdale beachfront properties. First is the W Fort Lauderdale. Now this is a Marriott property. It's a luxury hotel with beachside access. And that means that guests must cross the street to access the beach, but it's not far. 
It's a small inconvenience because once you're there, guests have access to complimentary loungers, umbrellas, and towels, and there are tons of restaurants, some with live music that are in close proximity to the hotel. Now, in terms of distance to port, it's only about 13 to 15 minutes. So getting there via rideshare like Uber is fast and affordable. The resort fee is a little steep, $45 per night, but it does include other amenities like use of bicycles and yoga classes on a first come first serve basis. My next pick is Lago Mar Beach Club and Resort. Now this property is less than five miles from the port and it's consistently rated as one of the best hotels in Fort Lauderdale. Although, be forewarned, it's luxury and high quality, it comes at a cost because this is also one of the more expensive hotel options in the area. Cruisers who are willing to splurge though will likely find an amazing experience here with top-notch service and unparalleled cleanliness. This property is noted for its family-friendly and quiet vibe and it offers easy access to 500 feet of private beach. That's the distinction here, it's private beach access. Guests also get to use complimentary towels and beach chairs, although they do rent umbrellas at an additional cost, which I don't like nickel and diming like that, but there are no resort fees, and that's a huge plus. My third recommendation is Hotel Marin Fort Lauderdale Beach. This property has the look and feel of a boutique hotel, but it's part of the Hilton Curio Collection. So if you're a Hilton card holder, you may get additional perks like a waived resort fee. This Fort Lauderdale hotel is high rated and moderately priced compared to the other beachfront hotel options. It's located directly across the street from Las Olas Beach and it's a short walk from several bars and restaurants. The daily resort fee is 45 bucks, so a little steep, but that covers guest access to beach chairs, towels. You also can access yoga classes, you get free included Wi-Fi, and there also is a daily included signature drink. Like the last property, umbrellas here are an additional rental cost, but it's close to the port, only about six miles. Now, there are a ton of great Fort Lauderdale beach hotel options, but these are my top three hand-picked properties based on my experience talking to other cruisers and consideration of cost, location, and guest ratings. But next, let's talk about the affordable options if you're just looking for a clean and comfortable place to stay before your cruise. First up is Comfort Suites Fort Lauderdale Airport and Cruise Port. Located less than three miles from both the Fort Lauderdale Airport and Port Everglades, this hotel is conveniently located right in the middle of it all. Guests enjoy free shuttle service from the airport along with free Wi-Fi and hot breakfast. Now this property though, it's a prime example of how cruisers sometimes get so caught up in the aspect of finding a shuttle to port that they don't realize that this might not be the best option. Now in this case, I like the hotel, but I don't like the shuttle option. They contract with a third-party cruise port shuttle provider to get guests from the hotel to the port. And if you do that, you have to schedule for pickup at a specified time, either 9, 9.45, 10.45, 11.45, or 12.45. The cost is $15 per person. Now let's compare that to an Uber. Because of the hotel's close proximity to port, you can actually take an Uber with up to four people for only around 10 to $15. So in this case, an Uber is substantially going to be cheaper than taking the port. So I don't like that, but I love that this hotel has a great location, great prices, it's always clean and highly rated. If you stay here, I would skip the shuttle service. Next is Hyatt Place Fort Lauderdale Cruise Port. This property is also close to port, only about three miles. I like this one because it's just a few minutes walk to some great attractions, so you can enjoy things the evening before your cruise. This includes bars, restaurants, and the Harbor Shops Mall. If you stay here, you get complimentary continental, not hot, but continental breakfast and free Wi-Fi, and the hotel offers a shuttle to port. Their shuttle cost is a little cheaper at $9 per person, and you have to schedule a check-in. But again, unless you're traveling solo, two to four people, it's gonna be a lot cheaper and way more convenient just to take an Uber. My third Fort Lauderdale pick is Courtyard Fort Lauderdale Airport and Cruise Port. Like the other two recommended properties, this hotel is located close to both airport and port, but this has the distinction of being along the Tri-Rail Station. It receives high marks for friendly staff and cleanliness, and unlike the other properties, it does not offer free breakfast, but they do include Wi-Fi and an airport shuttle. As for the shuttle to the port, you can schedule that at check-in through their recommended third-party provider for pickup at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon, or 1 p.m. But get this, hold your pants, their shuttle service costs $20 per person. It's highway robbery. Don't do it. You can Uber up to four people again, 10 bucks to port because it's so close. So with all of these properties, I recommend them all, but I recommend you do not use their shuttle service. So there you have it, my Port Everglades recommendations. And again, I'm never sponsored by any hotel. I've never been comped a hotel stay at any of these properties and any and all stays I've had at these hotels have been on my own dime. This is my honest opinion only. Next up, let's talk about not just Florida's most bustling port, but one of the biggest in the world, Port Canaveral. A lot of cruisers think there's a cruise port in Orlando, but there's not. Orlando's landlocked. 
The cruise port near Orlando, Florida is officially named Port Canaveral. And while it's not far from Orlando, it's not in Orlando, it's located in Cape Canaveral. Now this port in Port Miami, they jockey back and forth for the title of the world's busiest cruise port. So it is a popular cruise departure port. A lot of cruisers like to fly in early when they're porting out of Canaveral because of the port's proximity to Orlando, which again, is only about 45 minutes away. And with all of the attractions and theme parks in Orlando, that's a popular choice. But some cruisers like to stay closer to port because of access to things like the Kennedy Space Center and Cocoa Beach. So if you're looking for theme park in that scene, I recommend you look for hotels in Orlando proper. But if you're seeking a beach day experience at Cocoa Beach, or you wanna stay near the port, here are my recommendations. First, if you're a sand and sun type of person and you wanna tack on an extra beach day before your cruise, I recommend a beachfront hotel in nearby Cocoa Beach. Now it's great because Cocoa is just about 15 minutes from Port Canaveral, so you're still not far from port. Here are my top three beachfront hotel recommendations in Cocoa Beach. First is Hampton Inn, Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral. The Hampton Inn is a beachside property, and what that means is that it's a short walk to Cocoa Beach, but it's really not far. This location is nicely situated because it's in close proximity to a bunch of restaurants and shops like the popular Ranjan Surf Shop. There are vendors at the beach once you get there that rent umbrellas, chairs, and boogie boards to travelers, and guests are allowed to use towels from the hotel's pool area to take with them and use at the beach, returning them later, of course. This property offers free Wi-Fi and complimentary breakfast, and they do offer shuttle service to and from Port Canaveral, but that comes at a cost of $10 per person one way or $16 per person round trip. If you want to use the shuttle service, you need to schedule that advance when you check in. An Uber, however, might be a more affordable, convenient option, especially because the hotel is so close to port, and especially if you're two to four people traveling together. Next is Best Western Cocoa Beach. This is located on Atlantic Avenue, and actually all three of these recommendations are on North Atlantic. Avenue, which runs the span of Cocoa Beach, so they're all kind of close to each other. The Best Western in particular, however, is well regarded by cruisers because it's a great value. It's always clean and it's in close proximity, like the others, to Cocoa Beach. In this case, it's just a short four minute walk. Now, in this case, beach towels are not provided, which I don't like, but guests get free Wi-Fi and hot breakfast, and they offer a shuttle service to port. That comes at a cost of $10 per person each way, with shuttles running at 10.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., and 12.30 p.m. If you want to take the shuttle, you simply schedule that when you check in. Again, Uber, it's going to be cheaper and way more convenient. So make sure you at least price that out as an option before you use the hotel's shuttle service. My third recommendation for a beachfront Cocoa Beach Hotel is Beachside Hotel and Suites, also located on North Atlantic Avenue. Now, the standout feature of this property is its close proximity to Cocoa Beach. Yes, they're all close to Cocoa Beach, but this is just 315 feet behind the hotel. This property is really impressive because it has an awesome pool area, including a small lazy river. So if you have kids, they're probably gonna love this one. Guests also enjoy free Wi-Fi and hot breakfast. You also get complimentary use of beach chairs, umbrellas, bikes, and surfboards. But note that these are limited in supply each day and they're available on a first come first serve basis. So if you're a late sleeper, you may not be able to take advantage of some of these amenities. Guests are also allowed to use the hotel's pool towels at the beach, returning them later. This property does offer a shuttle service at a cost of $10 per person. So if you're traveling solo, it may be the cheaper option to use the shuttle, but if you have two or more people sharing the cost, an Uber is probably gonna be cheaper and definitely more convenient. There are over 30 Cocoa Beach hotels, which can get overwhelming, but these are my three hand picks because they consistently rank among the top choices for travelers cruising out of Port Canaveral. When selecting a pre-cruise hotel, I always urge cruisers not to get sidetracked about the free shuttle service or any shuttle service. Stop it. Stop thinking about it. Stop asking about it because it doesn't matter. Almost all the hotels near the port are going to have shuttle service, but with the very, very rare exception here and there, it's almost never free and it costs more than an Uber. So look at other factors like convenience, what you're looking for, do you want beach access, what is the cost, those sorts of things. The best beachfront options at Cocoa Beach near Port Canaveral. Now, if you're the type of cruiser who's looking for an affordable hotel in Cape Canaveral, close to port, this next section is for you. Keep in mind that while these are not beachfront properties, this is a bustling area, especially during peak cruise season, and that can drive up prices, making affordable a relative term. Now, you are gonna find that properties here are generally significantly cheaper than out of Miami or Fort Lauderdale, but it might be a little bit more than you're usually expecting to pay at similar properties that are not at a port location. So let's get into my top three picks for affordable Port Canaveral hotels. First is Country Inn & Suites at Port Canaveral. 
Now, if you ask cruisers where their favorite Port Canaveral hotel is, they'll often pick this one. Why? Because it is one of the closest to port. It's only about half a mile, so the day of your cruise, you're right there. They also offer free Wi-Fi and hot breakfast, and they do offer a shuttle to port. Now, the shuttle here is a lot more affordable than other properties. It's only $5 per person. But because it is in such close proximity to port, still, if you have two or up to four cruisers, an Uber is probably going to be a cheaper option and definitely more convenient. Up next is Radisson Resort at Port Canaveral. This property is less than two miles, about a five minute drive from Port Canaveral, so they're all kind of close. But this property receives high marks from cruisers because of the fact that it has an amazing pool area including a designated kiddie pool. Like a lot of the other properties, you also get free Wi-Fi, although in this case, breakfast is not included. Now, Radisson offers a shuttle to Port Canaveral at a cost of $6 per person, which you reserve a check-in, and shuttle service to and from MCO, or Orlando Airport, is $28 per person each way. If you wanna use the airport shuttle service, you have to reserve that 48 hours in advance. However, when it comes to getting from the hotel to the cruise port, taking Uber may be a more affordable and convenient option. My third recommendation is Hampton Inn and Suites Cape Canaveral. Now this property is just one mile from port and it is highly regarded by cruisers because of its proximity to port, but also its cleanliness and value. Like all the others, you get free Wi-Fi, you get free breakfast, in this case it's hot breakfast, and the shuttle to port is reserved at check-in if you wanna use that option. It runs at 10.30 and 11.45 a.m. daily at a cost of $10 per person. Now in this case, take an Uber. I actually priced it out and the fare from this property to Port Canaveral on an average day with non-surge pricing is just $9. So even if you're a solo cruiser, it's cheaper to Uber than it is to take the shuttle and you don't have to wait for those designated times. So those are my recommendations for beachfront and affordable hotels near Port Canaveral. But I wanna give you one other option and this is a nearby Titusville. And this is more of a unique experience if that's something you're looking for. And my recommendation here is Casa Coquina Del Mar in Titusville. Now this is for folks who are looking for more of an experience rather than just a place to lay down your head or a place to be close to the beach. This hotel is a charming bed and breakfast. It's only about a five minute drive to the Enchanted Forest Sanctuary and the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. And it's only 15 minutes from the cruise port and the Kennedy Space Center. So you're still close to everything, but you get more of a unique boutique experience at this property than my other recommended properties. These are all great hotels in Cape Canaveral, which are consistently highly rated by cruisers sailing from Port Canaveral. But I advise folks not to book them or any property just because of the shuttle service. As I've said before, make sure you're considering other factors like convenience, hotel ratings, location, and other amenities when you make a decision. Because taking an Uber to port is often cheaper and more convenient especially if you're traveling with a group of people to up to four. And if you're looking for transportation to and from MCO Airport, it's usually cheaper and more convenient to find your own private options or third party transfer services on your own. All right, so now that you've figured out when you're gonna fly in and where you're gonna stay and how you're gonna get to port, the last thing you need to figure out is getting back home. For cruisers who fly to their cruises departure port city, one of the decisions you have to make is when to book your return flight home. Now, for me personally, I aim for a sweet spot of around noon. Anything later leaves me waiting, anything earlier leaves me stressed. That noon time generally gives you enough time to disembark the cruise ship, get to the airport, and fly home without any stress or concern of missing a flight. Now, exceptions do happen, and some people will tell you to book it after 1 or 2 p.m. I think that's a little excessive, because those exceptions are rare when a disembarkation is delayed. Generally speaking, flights after noon are a pretty safe bet. So then, what do you do if you get stuck with a late flight home? Maybe you only have one option back home or it's the only affordable option and it might not fly back until 9, 10 p.m. Now you're stuck in your port city, you've got your luggage, what do you do? Here are my four recommendations. First is to stow your luggage and kill time. Now I've been in this situation many times and in situations where I only have a few hours to kill, I'll find a place to stow my luggage, a place like Radical Storage, I'll link it below. And then I look for a storage location near a destination with something to do that's accessible on foot. Now my favorite spots are malls and movie theaters because I can kill a few hours there pretty easily. Then I just get my luggage, take an Uber from that storage location to the airport and I'm home. Now assuming you don't go crazy and waste too much money at the mall, this is an affordable option as storage solutions often run just about $6 per bag to stow. The second option is to book an excursion. Yes, you can go on excursion or do an activity after your cruise. 
Some of these include transportation to and from the activity, and they have the option to store your luggage securely in the bus or van from the tour provider. Now, personally, I don't care much for this option. I really don't ever do it because after a cruise, I'm usually pretty worn out and ready to go home. But if you've got a lot of energy and you're still looking to maximize your activity on vacation, go this route. If you do, I recommend using Viator. I'll drop my link below. The third option is to rent a car. If you have a lot of time to kill, sometimes I will rent a car. Some rental car agencies will provide free shuttle service from the cruise port to their facility, or you can always take an Uber. With a rental car, you have the luxury of keeping your luggage securely stowed in the trunk of the car, and then you have complete freedom and flexibility to fill your day however you want. You can explore your port city, get out, try new experiences. Although it might be more expensive than returning to the pickup location, you sometimes can actually drop off at a different location. An example is Port Canaveral. I might rent a car at Port Canaveral, need to return it at MCO or Orlando International Airport because they're 45 minutes apart. That often is an option, but you'll sometimes pay a little bit of a premium for that luxury. The next option is to book a day pass or a day room. When I have more than about six hours to kill, I will book a day pass or a day room through a site like Resort Pass or Resort for a Day. And this day pass gives me the opportunity to enjoy the hotel's amenities like pool facilities or beachfront access for the day. And sometimes this is a shockingly low price, like 15 to 20 bucks. Plus, the hotel will store your luggage for you. So that is a resort pass or a day pass. A day room is a different option. This is a little more expensive, sometimes a lot more expensive, than a day pass, but it gives travelers access to an actual hotel room for the day, generally with checkout at 4 p.m. I love this option because it gives me a place to securely stow my luggage. I can get out and explore, but I also have a great spot to chill, take a nap, or even take a shower. Plus, if the hotel has other amenities like a pool, beachfront access, stuff like that, guests can typically use those as well. So regardless of what you choose to do, thinking and planning ahead can make the end of your cruise experience a little more smooth sailing, which is important because if you're like me, I'm usually pretty wiped out after a cruise. So there you have it. If you like this video and want more content like this, including helpful tips and strategies for your cruising adventures, check out my blog at profmelissa.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter. Oh, and don't forget, hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Happy sailing.